not on video. So, B'Shem Hashem Na'asim and Atzliach, we are still in Halachot of Mukseh, but we have discussed Basis Ledavar Ha'asur, right? Basis Ledavar Ha'asur is a base, Basis, uh, something that goes underneath. And Davar Ha'asur, something which was Mukseh, mainly Mukseh Mahpach Yisrael Kis, or Mukseh Mahmad Gufo was placed on it. And that would render this this thing that was uh, allowable to be moved, it makes it asur to be moved, right? That means if you put it, place it there before Shabbat, now this uh, table, per se, would become asur to uh, move it on Shabbat. Now, there is a prohibition, it's called bitul keli mehechano. Okay, bitul keli mehechano. Uh, it is asur to perform an act which will nullify a vessel from what it is set aside for. It, it is asur, bitul means to nullify, right? To cancel out, to nullify. Keli, a vessel, mehechano. Hechano, Rashi says in Gemara Shabbat, it means, it comes from can. Can means uh, what it is set out to be. So let's say, for example, we're going to give an example. From there, we're going to see. Uh, it means that one on Shabbat is not allowed to put something which is muktze, either chisaron kis or mahmat gufo, onto something which is melachto leheter, okay? Uh, because by doing this, this thing, this thing that goes underneath, that was underneath, becomes a sur to move it around. That we can do on Shabbat. Have you heard this before? Okay. The Mishnah says that the prime example, there are two prime examples. Let's say you have a chicken, right? And you know your chicken is going to lay an egg. And you're afraid that this egg is going to go, is going to uh, fall and break. So you take, uh, a, 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 let's say, a plastic plate or something uh, cushion, and you put it underneath so that when the egg is laid, it'll go into this. This is mevatel keli mehechano, because you are causing that receptor receptor, right, to become mukseh. It becomes a basis of the asur. An egg is a nolad. It's something that well, we're going to discuss that later. It's going to, is something that, uh, that is mukseh, right? Now, causing this plate now to be immobile for the rest of Shabbat, this is called mevatel keli mehechano. Another example. The, uh, they would have uh, lamps uh, that had oil, right? They would put a wick in the oil and uh, they would light it. Now, he sees that some of the oil, I don't know, somehow they would spill out or they would, uh, they would the spritz out, as they say. So he didn't want the, his tablecloth to get oily. So he takes a plate, puts it underneath, so that the oil that spills will spill onto this plate. This oil is totally mukse. And this mukse oil, would, which would drip into the plate, would render this plate, basis Sadabar Asur, it's called Hotsa'at Keli Mehechano. And it is asur to be either Motsi Keli Mehechano or Mevatel Keli Mehechano. It's both the same term. Okay? Motsi means you take it out of what it is set out to be or you are Mevatel Keli Mehechano. You nullify your Keli from what it is set out to be. Okay? So the Ramam explains what's the reason. He says the reason is because it's like you are destroying this Keli. You know, this was a nice, <laughs> nice plate. And now, by doing this, you're destroying it because now you, you can't move it around on Shabbat. <coughs> others, many others, like Rabbi Aratami Nuli, some say Rashi, uh, you know, Rashi brings both reasons. They say, no, that's not it. It's as if you are building, you are making a kli. Now that you are making it stuck on this table or on this uh, surface, whatever it is, you are making a new kli. Whatever the reason is, like, you know, we're just uh, looking at the reasoning behind it. You know what the Ritva says? Uh, the reason is because by doing this, you are disrespecting Shabbat. Because you're showing, uh, because of Shabbat, now I can't move this plate. <laughs> That's what he says. says you're, it's like it's, it, it hurts the kavod of Shabbat doing this. That's what the Ritva says. Whatever the reason is, uh, it is, Chachamim tell us that it is asur to do this act, to cause a keli to become uh, nullified. Bitul keli Now, the Benish Chai says, therefore, 
that it is asur to put uh, um, almond shells, um, the walnut shells, right, into a keli, into an empty platelet. Okay? Why? Because they're totally mukzeh. No, uh, it's, it's not food. You know, and even your dog won't eat it. And uh, even your sheep won't eat it. So these things are totally mukse. And if you put them into a plate on Shabbat, let's say you're eating, uh, you're eating this stuff and you're putting the shells into this plate, uh, then you are causing this plate to become, uh, to become bitul keli mehechano. You're causing the keli to be mehechano. Now, on this, many ask a question. They say, first of all, for a few reasons, they want to disagree with the Ben Ishchai. One is, you are not leaving these shells in there for the duration of Shabbat. You're not interested to leave these things in the play for the duration of Shabbat. And many say <coughs> that if your intention, when you're putting these things into this plate, is just temporary, you're going to get rid of them, you're going to throw them in the trash in, in 10 minutes, in an hour, whatever it is. So you are not intending to cause that this keli, this plate, should become nullified and like, you know, useless. You're going to get rid of it. That, therefore, it's fine. Our prime example was really with the oil. The Gemara is talking about the oil. That, his intention is not to get rid of the oil. Are you kidding? After Shabbat, he's going to use the oil for salad or for lighting purposes, whatever it is. Oil is not something you're going to throw away. So his intention was to keep it there for the duration of Shabbat, number one. Number two, the oil is something very important. Whereas the, uh, the shells, the whatever peanut shells or the uh, almond shells or the, the walnut shells, these things are it's, it's trash. It's not hashivu. It has no importance. So therefore, because of these two reasons, they do argue and they say that it is not a su to put the shells into the uh, the plate or whatever it is, because uh, you know you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get rid of it. You don't want it to stay there for the duration of Shabbat. Is that clear? So, so therefore, Rabbi Vadya says it is mutar to put your peanut shells or walnut shells into a plate. Or any without having any other trash on it. Without uh, and not not trash. Without any, uh, we're gonna get right, to it. Uh, now, now. So that means we don't have we don't face that problem with anything. Correct. Putting anything in a plate. However, how are you going to move it? It's mokse. We got rid of the problem, the issue of bitul keli mehechano, that you know what, you are allowed to put it in this plate, but how are you going to move it? It's mokse. And it's not mokse mahmat isur or keli shemelachtole isur, it's mokse mahmat gufo. It's not food, it's not, uh, it's not a kli. The, uh, the, the walnut shell, you know, all these things. So therefore, there are mukse mahmat gufo. Sometimes mukse mahmat gufo, you cannot move it. How are you going to get rid of it? Few ways. You understand what happened? There, there's few is two issues. One issue is, are you allowed to put it in this plate or in this cup or in this, whatever it is, to start with? So the Benish Chai says, no, you can't. You got to put something else in the plate. Let's say a piece of bread an apple, whatever it is you want to put in there, this way your keli, your plate, or whatever it is, doesn't become nullified because it's, it, is, it is being used for something mutar. So that we don't even have to worry. You don't have to put anything else in there. Just put them in the plate. Fine. Chazak you put it in the plate. Now how do I get rid of the trash? One, uh, if you have a disposable tablecloth, just flick the plate. Like, you know, and let these things uh, fall onto there because you're not moving it, you're not moving the plate in a normal manner. Just flick it off, and then all the, the whatever, all these shells, they fall on the tablecloth, and then you're going to take the tablecloth and throw it in the trash. That's number one. Number two, so this, uh, the number two everyone knows. Like, you know, before you start, put some food in there, right? Or even after you start. You're finished eating, you have the stuff in the plate, and we said that's not Asur. According to Rabbi, it's not Asur. So now you want to move it? No problem. Take a piece of apple or even a fork or a spoon. You could put it in after. You could put it after. That's what I'm saying. I thought we were, I thought we were, I thought we can't. <laughs> According to the Ben Ishchai, you're right, you can't. Because, see, again, the first step was, can you put it in this plate? 
it's it's a bitul keli meichano. You are you are nullifying this keli. Rabbi Yehuda says you're not because it's number one, it's temporary. Number two, it's not chashuv. It's not it's not important. Therefore, you could put it in. For sure, if a person wants to be machmir, for sure, if a person wants to be machmir and wants to do it, could do it. And you know what? Why not? It's Shabbat. But let's first see what is uh, what uh, what Rabbi says. Rabbi says you're allowed. To. If a person wants to be machmir like the Ben Ishchai, for sure, you know you know why not? Why not? I'll do like the Ben Ishchai and uh, and put something in the plate. But if let's say someone forgot. We're still like, listen. You're still Jewish. You're okay. You could do it. However, when it comes time to move it, now we are in trouble. So number one, he could flick it off into the into the uh, under the tablecloth. Number two, put something in it, and now therefore you could move it because now it's uh, it's a container for both mutar and and uh, mukte. Uh, and once you have that, then you could carry it over to the to the trash can. Empty it out. Don't throw out your fork, or spoon, or, or or the apple. Uh, you know, bat uh, But uh, and then and then you're good. Number three, what you could do is, obviously, the plate didn't become mukta mahmad gufo. What's in it is mukta mahmad gufo. So the, and remember what we said before. If before Shabbat you placed it, then the plate gets the din the halacha of mukta mahmad gufo. But being that he just put it put the stuff under on Shabbat. Right? It doesn't make the plate muktzeh machmat gufo. Therefore, if you need this space where the plate is, then you could literally pick up the plate in a normal fashion without adding anything to it and taking it to the trash and emptying it out, and that's fine, without having to put anything inside. What does that mean? If you that means like this. That means, that means that if you don't, if you want to clear the table, you could do that? If you want to clear the table because, you know, it doesn't look nice, or like there are people going to want to say, you still want to eat the shiri sheet. Right? If you're not going to eat Seudah Shirishit and you don't need this space, then you can't. Unless you put something in it or you just flick it off onto the tablecloth, the first two. But if you are going to have Seudah Shirishit and you have guests, you have people coming in, you need this space where this plate of the, uh, of the, uh, the, of the, the, I don't know, walnut shells and all these things are in it. In that case, you could go ahead and do it. Yes. So what about when you're, your actual plate that you're eating from? The shells. So now you want to get rid of it, right? Yeah. So again, we are faced with the same issue, right? So is that considered like it was used for something not muksa, so it still stays like that, or you should leave some food in there or just leave it for it? So you took care of the first issue. The first issue is, did you do bitul keli meichano? The answer is no. You didn't do bitul keli meichano. But now this plate contains what things that are mukse, right? So now, in order to to be able to move it. You need you need to have one of these uh, to meet one of these three criteria, either put a, put a fork in it, put a spoon in it, put food in it, right, to be able to move it. So it doesn't matter that you used it first. I think olive pits, oh, right? Doesn't matter. Animals, olive pits are not mukse because you could. Uh, I think I think animals could eat it. Right? I'm not sure. I think so. I think olive pits, but like you know the again like peanut uh, shells or these other things. Nah, who eats them? But anyways, if you want to clear the table and like bring dessert, you're allowed to Yes, it. that would be, right, uh, the, the, that would be, uh, what's it called, the Tzorach Bufo'um Komo, and therefore you could bring it. Good, that was the third condition that we said, yes. You want to bring dessert, you want to clear the table, or some people don't like it for Birkat uh, Amazon, they don't want, they don't want the garbage and stuff on the table. Although some people said, no, leave him, because Ben Chai says, you know, you have the Gilgulim, all the things that are spirits that are in this, in this stuff, like, you know, they go up. Through Birkat Amazon. So some people are careful to leave them on, like, you know. But, but again, like, you know, for the Kavuda Birkat Amazon, a lot of people would like to clear the table. If, if, you want, if they want to do that, you know, they, they just put it in some central thing, in a bag or something, they leave it on the table to, uh, to meet that. But otherwise, like, you know, it's, it's more Kavod, definitely more Kavod to, to say Birkat Amazon in a clear table. Along the lines of clearing the table, sorry, I don't know topic. Are you allowed to clear the table between the sushi and... No, <laughs> that's preparing for chol. Even if it's, you don't like the way it looks, then right. If if you do it before Birkat Amazon, I could see a header, right? Again, you're doing it for the cover of Birkat Amazon. But if he's doing it because you know, oh man, I don't, I don't like the way this looks. Well, wait an hour, you'll like it. 
it's, it is, it is, uh, it would be hachana for a Unless it's something that's going to go bad. Right? Let's say it's a very hot summer day, and you just had some dish dish, and you had, uh, I don't know, egg salad on the table. And that egg salad has got mayonnaise in it. It is going to go bad if it stays, let's say, it's very hot. Then that you could move, but everything else, no. That would be. Not even, not even the food that's been refrigerated. If you think it's going to go bad, as I said, like the egg salad, let's say, like you know, but there's a salad there. What's going to happen to the salad? Nothing. So, then there would be you're you're just making your job easier for uh, for Moshe Shabbat. That's hachana. That would be. Uh, now, good question. Your trash can is totally empty. Can you put <laughs> uh, these shells in your trash can? <coughs> right? Is it Hosea Kelime Echano or not? Should you first put, some, put something which is not Muktzeh, let's say like an orange peel in it? No. no. Because you That's the, the point of the trash is the whole Muktzeh. Thank you. Moshe Levi Zichron Levracha says it is Asur. Right, to, put, uh, to put these sort, sort of uh, real muksa stuff into an empty trash can. So therefore he says, first put some, I don't know, some piece of paper or whatever, something that, would, that is not muksa in there, so then you're not, he doesn't do what's like in Hanar, but he says it is perfectly fine because exactly as you said, it, that's what it's for, right? That's what it's for, and therefore it, it, from the beginning, you know, <laughs> you buy the trash can, you know, for this purpose, and that's, that's what it's made for, so therefore you could do it. Uh, and the trash can itself, it is not muktze, it is totally kelisha menachto leheter. You might think, oh, it's disgusting, you put the in, so therefore it's, it's a muktze machman news. You know, there is such a thing as muktze machman news, something becomes very disgusting. It's, it's muktze because you, don't, you put it out of your mind, you don't want to deal with it. That's a separate uh, category of muktze. Uh, where sometimes you cannot move something which is muktze, but uh, these days we have less and less of it, unless Unless someone has a, uh, one of these bins that they put the dirty diapers in it, right? That becomes Muqsa Mahmat Mi'us. It's rather disgusting. And, uh, and you put it out of your mind. So therefore, you know, you can't move it. Unless it turns into a graph, into a... Uh, I, don't want, I didn't want to go into it because it's not that relevant these days. Uh, but, uh, but this, I see that it would be relevant, Right? If you have a bin that you put your dirty diapers in it, uh, this thing is, uh, is pretty bad. Like it, it smells very bad and therefore it becomes muqsem ahmad mi'us. Mi'us means it's disgusting. So a person is like disgusted by it. So in that case, uh, what can you do? We can't move it because your makse otomidato, he puts it out of his mind. However, if it's bothersome, it's like near you and you can't sit there, it becomes what is called graf sherei. Graf sherei is a container that they would, uh, that they would uh, use uh, to put refuse in. Okay? And, uh, and that, you can't sit near it. So over there, uh, the Gemara brings the thing that, like, you know, being that it's, uh, you can't sit near that thing, so there is a heter to move it out, to throw it out in the trash, and, uh, and that's it. Some, some things, let's say the table becomes really disgusting. Like, you know, I don't know, little kids were eating and like made such a mess and it's full of mukta stuff. That gets the din of graf sherei. That means that the container, that, uh, that in that case, a person is allowed to gather it all up and throw it in the trash. It's not a problem because you know, we want to sit at the table. We want to sit in the, in the living room. And with these conditions, we can't. And then in that case, we are allowed to go ahead and move it. Okay, so, so this is, uh, is there more on the Mabatel Kelim Mehechano? I think these are, we gave a couple of good, good examples of Bitul Kelim Mehechano, and I hope everyone understood what Bitul Kelim Mehechano is. So next time you're in someone's home and you see that they are like, you know, very careful to put something in their plate before they start putting the peanut shells, don't be surprised because uh, they're going like the Benish Chai and... You know, we could do that, we could do the same. However, there is a heter not to. You know what, there is another cute example. It's brought down in the poskim uh, that, like this, uh, air, conditions, air conditioners, they have a, uh, a condensation pipe, right? Uh, you know how ACs work. They, they, uh, there is an intake, and it takes the air, 
and it cools the air and sends it out, right? Now, in, during that process, there is some humidity in the air, right? And this gets piled up, piled up, piled up, and then you see, that's where you see all this water dripping, either from your car or from your air conditioning, like you're not at home. Now, this water is a very clean water because it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it, you could even drink it. It's that clean, right? Because what happens is the, the condensation process, you know, the, that, that this water comes from it rather, is rather clean water. So it, it's funny. Being that this water could be used, I don't know who in the world would use this. So now, uh, the, water, the problem with the water is it's mukte. Why is it mukte? Because this water uh, is nolat. It was not in existence. Your air condition, air conditioning, made. I'm so sorry, Rabbi. The building is secure. If you're parked in the garage, please leave out this rear exit. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. But uh, Joseph, maybe some people want to come from the front door. Is it? Is that also locked? Yes, you can open it. You no, can from outside, can they open it? No, they cannot open it from outside. Because the, uh, there are still people coming into the building. Is that okay? Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> How can you even get that water? <laughs> oh, there is a pipe. There is a pipe. And they bring the pipe. There is, there is a few things. There are few, it's interesting, I found this. Like, you know, there is a few things that they say. First of all, if a person sees that the pipe, now this pipe goes down, and you don't want it to get all over the place, so they have a container there, and they put the pipe in it. So someone comes and sees that this pipe is out of the container. Can he on Shabbat move the pipe into the container? The answer is no, you can't, right? Because, because this is Hosea Kelim Hechano. You're causing that this muktzah stuff is gonna go in there. You get it? <laughs> what if there's something in Perfect, so that's exactly what they say. They say if there's already water in it. Put water in it, put water in it. That's, if there was already water in it, that's fine in that case. Why? Because the new water, which is nolat, that goes into this now is going to be batel. It's going to be just nullified, like, you know, and therefore that's motar. But if there's nothing in it, that's where the problem is. Number one. Number two. <laughs> uh, so, so oh, okay, we said that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a cute thing that, like, you know, to do it. You know, some people use this water, they put it in, a, in, a, in an iron. That's what they brought down. They put it in an iron for ironing. Like, an, I don't know, I guess there's a lack of water. And uh, so, uh, drought, California, we have to conserve uh, water. Does it have the, when you have the water from the tap, it has... It's oh, right, the white, the white stuff, the, the minerals. Yeah, that's true. Oh, maybe that's what they meant. Maybe that's what they meant. Okay, very good, good point. Anyhow, uh, that was another example I forgot, to, uh, I forgot to mention, another example of bitul keli mehechano, to put the pipe into the container that would be bitul keli mehechano, unless, as you said, there is already water in it. Okay, uh, next, next segment uh, in uh, mukze, another type of mukze is called mukze mahmat mitzvah. What does that mean? Something uh, that you, do, you, perf- you use to perform mitzvot, so you put it out of your mind. You're not going to use it for personal use. So it becomes mukteh, right? We said mukteh means that you put it out of your mind. I have no use for it, no personal use for this. So that's what this becomes, right? It becomes mukteh machmat mitzvah. Uh, what are those? Let's say the sechach of the sukkah or the walls of the sukkah. You, they are, they, you put them completely out of your mind because you say, I'm not going to use this for personal usage. So therefore they become mukseh. Uh, uh, the lulav and the etrog and the hadas and the aravot, the, the arbaminim, they're also mukseh. All these things are called mukseh machamat mitzvah. They're mukseh, they are, they are set aside from a person's mind because they're used for the mitzvah. Therefore, we cannot use them on Shabbat during the time that they, there is a mitzvah to use these things i.e., when we're talking about the, the things of sukkah, the whole duration of sukkot, these things are mukse. What about the decorations of sukkah, right? Uh, or, or let's say you have uh, fruit that are hanging from the sukkah. Uh, these are also considered mukse mahmad mitzvah. Why is that mitzvah? Because it is a mitzvah to beautify your mitzvot, right? 
זה מצוות רבי יפה יום מצוות, ראי, כי זה אלי ועם והוא, ראי, כי נו, אתה יודע מי זה התנהל לפניו במצוות, ואם ידעו במצוות, דברים in the most beautified manner, and therefore, uh, these things, these decorations, like, you know, that you put up in the sukkah, they're also a mitzvah. They're also muqtza mahmad mitzvah. And, uh, and can, we cannot have any benefit from them uh, d- during sukkot. Yes? Why is there such a concept? Isn't it like, Uh, I didn't understand. What do you mean? Like you mentioned Lula and Etrek would be Mitzvah. Right. So why, like, isn't it better to do more Mitzvahs on Shabbat? But how, do you, uh, how would you want to do Mitzvot? The, uh, let me get this straight. Are you saying that okay, we yeah. should be able to use the Lula and Etrek on, on Shabbat? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, like, well, yeah, it seems no. like you want to do more mitzvot on Shabbat, so why are these things also? Okay, fine. That's, that's a really, really, from the Torah, uh, you, we could. We could use the Lulav and Torah on Shabbat, but Chachamim came, and because of an outside reason, different reason, they said that these things, we cannot uh, shake Lulav and Torah on Shabbat, because the person might move it. Obviously, there's, uh, there's a lot of deep uh, concepts in there, uh, just like a shofar. Shofar is a mitzvah from the Torah. Right? To blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. And the Chacham came and said, don't. <laughs> don't blow the shofar on the Shabbat. How do you decide which mitzvahs would become muqsa? That's up to the Chachamim. Once the Chachamim said that these things cannot be performed on Shabbat, so it gets the halakha of muqsa. Muqsa machamat mitzvah. Right? Do they give any reason why specific things are and specific things aren't? Well, these things would be muqsa because, again, the definition of muqsa is that you put it out of your mind. Being that these things are set aside to perform mitzvot with, like, you know, let's say a shofar, or, or, uh, or, these, uh, or the arba minim, or these things. Being that they're used for the mitzvah, so you put it out of your mind. Say, hey, I'm not going to use these things for personal use. I'm not going to use the sukkah decorations now, I don't know, to put it for my kid's birthday, because I'm going to use it for the sukkot. Therefore, they become set aside, they become muktzeh, so that's where the halachot of muktzeh kick in. Right? Once Sukkot is over, hey, you're home free. You know, you're not using it for the mitzvah anymore, so the status of muktzeh is removed from it. Let's say you want to make a, a birthday party on a Shabbat for your child, you could take these decorations and use them because they're now they could be used for personal use. See what happened? Now, the decorations, if a person, we mentioned this before, if a person makes a tenai, makes a condition, before, uh, before Sukkot, and says, this is the, 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 the language is very important. He says, in any bodel, I am not separating, I'm not distancing myself, myself from these decorations or these fruit for the whole duration of Ben Hashem Ashot of Yom Tov. Right? Remember, because what if it becomes muktzed during Ben Hashem Ashot, then the law of migu de it katsai be ben hashemashot, being that it is set aside, it is mukseh, on the moment of ben hashemashot, on those few minutes of ben hashemashot, after sunset, before dark. During that time, if this thing becomes mukseh, it becomes mukseh for the duration of Shabbat, in this case, for the duration of the eight days, nine days, right, until after Simchat Torah. So it's important to say, if he says, like, you know what, I don't want this thing to be mukseh once it falls off. It doesn't work because during Ben Hashemashot, it was Moksa, it didn't fall off. <coughs> so therefore, it remains Moksa for the whole duration of nine days. You can't move it. <coughs> but if you say, I am not distancing myself from this for the duration of Ben Hashemashot, then if it falls later, you could go ahead and pick it up and put it back on, no problem. For all nine days, even during Kalamai? Correct. That's correct. You can't touch the In Spanish, they say, si. Uh, you can't. But here, that's true only for the decorations and the fruit. But if the sechach falls, then uh, what? Uh, the sechach, he can't make this tonight because <laughs> if the sechach falls, then your sukkah, if, during Ben Hashem Ashot, then your sukkah is pasul. It, it, it just doesn't. The, the tonight, the condition, the precon- uh, the, uh, that won't work. And therefore, uh, if it falls, then it is muksir. You got to tell a guy or something to come, uh, to come put it back up. Uh, then, then we'll worry about it. Oh, the... If a person wants, like, you know, you have, a, you have a neighbor that says, oh, I love your sukkah decorations, they're so gorgeous. Uh, you know, you feel bad. You know what? I have plenty of decorations. Let me give them one of my decorations. Is that allowed? Even if you didn't make it in any, any conditions. Maybe for you, not for him. You are allowed to. 
he's also allowed to. You're allowed to move a decoration from one sukkah to another sukkah. It's an interesting halakha. I just wanted to mention that. About, about this sukkah, just, let's say you want to have, let's say you hang up the looms inside your sukkah during Cholomot. With the tonight that you are going to move them, are you allowed to... Yeah. With the tonight that you're not removing distancing yourself from them during Ben Shemashot, balloons, right? Yeah. Then you could. But remember, the tonight has to be Ben Shemashot. That during Ben Shemashot, I am I'm still buddies with these balloons. How about if you attach them to the Sakh? Are you is the Sakh Moksa period? The Sakh is Moksa, but whatever you attach to it is not Moksa. Yeah. If you make a condition, it's not Moksa. You are allowed to use it. You're allowed, and you're allowed to take it off from the Sakh. If you make that condition, yes. Uh, now, what about Lulav and Etrog? They have the same halakha because the, the, whole, the whole time uh, of, 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 the, of the Yom Tov, the halakha becomes Muktze Mahmad Gufo. Uh, definitely on Shabbat because you can't eat them. <laughs> you want to do the mitzvot with them, you can't eat them. And uh, for sure, you're not going to eat the Lulav and the Arava and the, and the Hadas. These things you're not going to eat. So, therefore, it is also even to move them, the Torah Gufo Um Komo. Right? Even if it's sitting on the table, but well, I, 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 I don't want it here. I want to I wanna eat. You can't. It's, uh, it, uh, <laughs> what? That's on Yom Tov. On Yom Tov for the, uh, for the Baracha, even the whole day. If someone comes, you could go ahead and move it and give it to him. We're talking about Shabbat. We're talking about Shabbat. No, no, that's, that's the Sukkah. That's the Sukkah. The Minim, of course, you want to perform the mitzvot. That's, uh, there, there's no halakha muqsa on them. We're talking about Shabbat. On Shabbat, he wants to move these, these, these things. They are, uh, they are not, uh, they are not, uh, they are not to be moved. Now, interesting thing. Is one allowed to, uh, to smell the hadassim on, on Shabbat? Hadassim of the Arba Minim on Shabbat. We just said they are muqsa. So you can't. They're mokseh machmak gufo. So you can't smell them. What about the etrog? Can you smell the etrog? The answer is yes. You can make a baracha. And etrog is a machloket. Can you make a baracha? Can you make a baracha? So you make a baracha and a lemon. The lemon has a good baracha to Hashem. You smell it and then you take the etrog and you could smell it. But you can't eat it. Obviously not. What the Mepharshim asks, this is, this is all that I'm telling you, it's all in the Gemara, don't worry, it's nothing new. Uh, they, they say, so what's the difference between an etrog and a hadas? The difference is, what does a person put an etrog out of his mind for? What is the etrog used for? For eating, I mean, forget about the mitzvah, for eating, you make a jam with it to eat it. So you put it out of your mind for eating purposes, for smelling purposes, which is not really the norm, for that you didn't put it out of your mind, therefore you could smell it. A hadas, though, on the other hand, what is the primary use of a hadas? For smelling. So for smelling, you put it out of your mind. So therefore, a person cannot smell the hadas on the Shabbat of Cholamoyed, Yom Tov, of Sukkot. It's just an interesting thing uh, to be mentioned. Uh, good. Fine. Uh, there is another segment of Muktzeh, which is, uh, so this, is all, this was Muktzeh Mahmat Mitzvah. Okay, a tefillin is also an item of mitzvah. So some poskim say, therefore it's mokseh. Others say, no, it's not. A child, that, uh, whatever, a man that, that's becoming bar uh, teshuvah, he really wants to uh, learn how to put on tefillin. Uh, and he wants to start putting on tefillin Sunday morning. When are you going to teach him? On Shabbat, you could teach him. <laughs> Wear it. Like, you know, there are there's other instances that a tefillin could be moved. Let's say, chas v'shalom, there is a fire or the tefillin is found on the street. You know, you can't carry it. Shabbat, is, you're not allowed to carry. So you could put it on <laughs> and take it in, indoors and then take it off. Right? So the, on, on, on. On, on, yeah. It's like a, your, your clothing. It becomes like your clothing. Uh, interesting. That, this, is the, I, this is the Mishnah in Masakha Shabbat. So therefore, right. So that's why our poskim say it's not muqsa. It's not necessarily muqsa. I mean, obviously, if it's sitting nicely in the, in the bag and everything and you just want to move it, then totally it's mukte. But for a purpose, like for teaching purposes, you want to teach him how to put on tefillin, there are, there are oh, times. If it's on a chair and, and you need the, the spa. Then it could be moved. Right. In a normal fashion. In a normal fashion. Right. Tefillin uh, is uh, because of these, uh, these situations. What if someone never put on tefillin? No, no, they can't perform the mitzvah 
of tefillin on Shabbat. No, that's totally out. Uh, tefillin is considered a, an ot, right? Shabbat is an ot. We can't mix these otiot, these two, uh, these two together. No. That's, I heard that. Oh, someone that's not Jewish. Um, that's on the, uh, that's on the, the he's, he's in the conversion process. They have to do Chilu Shabbat. They usually <coughs> turn to like turn the light on once on Shabbat. That's what they do. Okay, another segment is Nolad. Nolad, we, we touched on it a little bit. It's something that was not in the world and came into the world like came into existence on Shabbat, like an egg, like the chicken, like, you know, there was a chicken. Now he laid an egg on Shabbat, so this egg is nolad, right? And, uh, the, and therefore, uh, it, is, it has a halakha of mukseh, right? Uh, you know, uh, what else? What else? Another, I'm trying to think of another example that I didn't write. Uh, <coughs> oh, milk, there. Milk, yeah. That's also, that's also in the lab. Correct. Uh, with the cows? So, uh, this is actually, this is a big uh, kashrut issue because uh, some kibbutzim, they milk <laughs> normally and then, you know, they, they sell it to the wholesaler. So, the, the, years ago there was a bigger issue. Now it's much less for Hashem. Uh, now it's a lot of it's automated, you know, and so on and so forth. And they sell it to the goyim. Now what they do is they sell it to the goyim. That's what they do. Uh, here is not a problem because usually most of the farms that we have, uh, they're not, uh, you know, they, they do, they just, they have a contract with other, far, other distributors and they sell it to the goyim, you know, uh, the, the ones that are milked on Shabbat. It's not an issue. In Israel, it's more of an issue, so that's what they do. Uh, some want to rely, you know, because it's automated, therefore, like, you know, and the goy does it and the machines do it, so they, they do use it. But uh, the Mahadrin Kashriyot in Israel, they don't use those books. Uh, the question is, uh, what about rain? Rain and snow. Are they also nolad? So the Gemara says, this is, this, again, this is again the Gemara in Masakot Shabbat. The Gemara says, no, they're not nolad because they were already in existence in the clouds. Even if the clouds weren't there before Shabbat, but they were somewhere <laughs> and they were being formed. So therefore, they're not nolad. Makes a big difference. Let's say you have, you have a snowstorm and uh, you want to get out of the house. So can you move the snow? Oh, it's no lie. You can't move it. The answer is not only can you. It's a mitzvah to move the snow so that people won't slip, won't fall. And if there is, uh, I don't know why I'm telling you this. Oh, maybe if you go to Big Bear and there is uh, there is snow in the pathway, like you know, so and people might uh, fall chas So you're allowed to spread salt on it so that the salt will melt the snow and so you'll be able to walk safely through the snow. Can't you say the same about the egg and the milk? Yeah. yeah. They're already in the world. Right, they're there. No, no, no. The Gemara considers it the Dawa Shalom Bala Olam. It's not there. Sorry. Um, are you allowed to shovel snow? Yes, you are allowed to shovel snow. Uh, play with it? Play with it? That's a good question. Make it snowball. Is that bonnet maybe? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. We don't have, you know, you know we had the, uh, <laughs> we had the, 